I don't think I have ever, on a Sunday morning, had so many people come up to me with suggestions for my sermon. How many people told me today, this was the perfect day to preach fire and brimstone? <laughs> or that other suggestion about, well, let's reinstitute animal sacrifice with a big burning altar up the front. But I'm afraid I am going to go ahead with my original plan. And I want to talk today about the spiritual practice of reflection. Now, people often come to me and, and kind of compliment me by saying, you know, I don't know what life is without you and what you do. This ability you have of opening up scriptures and explaining what's going on in the passage of scripture, maybe bringing out some of the historical situations that are behind the writing of the passage of scripture. In some cases, explaining uh, some of the underlying language issues, the original language of the text in the, the Hebrew in the Old Testament or the Greek in the New, and uncovering nuances in the meaning that somehow do not quite make it through in the English translation. People say that they appreciate that. And they often say, well, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't understand the scriptures without you to explain it to me. And I appreciate that. I mean, it's, it's a very flattering thing for people to say. And, and I do appreciate having that ministry of being able to explain certain things about the scriptures and help people to understand them intellectually and understand what's going on. But there is a way, there's a sense in which that is not true. That you don't need me. Because though these things, these explanations can help to enhance our, our intellectual understanding of the scriptures, every single one of you has within you the tools and the abilities, all that you need to encounter God through the scriptures. And that is something far more important than mere intellectual understanding. And so this spiritual practice I want to introduce to you today is the practice of reflection. Now to reflect, and I hope you understand here, I'm not talking, uh, you know, about what a mirror does. I'm talking about reflection as a mental or spiritual activity. Is simply to focus your mind and your attention on one thing, one person, one event, in order to uncover deeper meaning and significance. And when we're talking about reflection as a spiritual Christian practice, the thing that we most often reflect on is scripture. Specific passages of scripture. And so as such, this practice is extremely old. It has been around forever. It is older than Christianity itself, as old as the Bible. For this is the practice that is referred to in our reading this morning from the book of Joshua. You know, as Joshua, this great leader takes over the leadership of the nation of Israel, God comes to him and says this, Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything great in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Understand what Joshua is being told there. He's not just being told to read the law, and of course by, by the law, what that means is the scriptures as they existed at that time. Those portions of the scripture that existed when this was written were collectively called simply the law. So God is telling Joshua how to use the Bible. And he's not simply saying to read it. He's not just saying, follow its instructions or do what it says. He's asking for something more. And he's suggesting that if Joshua can focus his mind and his thought processes, and indeed take the scriptures into his mind and his thought processes, something will happen. Something transformative. He will encounter God. That is the promise. And that is something that every single one of you can do. You have the 
ability with you. And you don't need special knowledge or training. I mean, yes, these things are good. It's good to have that deeper explanation of the history and the language that gets into the understanding of the passage. But you do not need to wait for those things in order to use the scriptures to encounter God. What I want to present to you today is a method that you can use on your own to encounter God in the scriptures. It is an ancient method, and it is commonly called the Lectio Divina. The Lectio Divina, that's a Latin phrase that simply means divine reading. And this particular method was invented or laid out by a man named St. Benedict in the Middle Ages. But really all that St. Benedict was that he did was he codified it. It's a method that has been around forever. It's really the method that is referred to in the book of Joshua, when, when God tells Joshua to focus on the scriptures. It's the same method that is laid out there in our reading this morning from the book of Psalms, Psalm 119, about how you can meditate and dwell on the word of the Lord. This method, as I say, is very old, and so to this day, the, the, there are four steps in this method, and to this day, they are still referred to using the Latin name. So the four steps in the Lectio Divina are these, the Lectio, the Meditatio, the Oratio, and the Contemplatio. First step is this, Lectio simply means read. Latin word for reading. So if you want to do a Lectio Divina, this is what you do. You set aside a little bit of time. 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, this is not something I know I'm all of busy lives, uh, but maybe finding 20 minutes in your week is something that I would hope any of us could do. Set aside 20 minutes, and you start simply by reading a passage of Scripture. Just read it. But read it not like you would read a novel, or not like you would read a newspaper article. A lectio is a very slow and deliberate reading. And so you take out this passage of scripture, and you sit down in silence and quiet, and read it slowly and carefully, and pay attention. And in particular, what you want to pay attention to is what are those things in that piece of that jump out at you, that just seem to be louder or old, bolder than anything else. Because if you read attentively, that will usually happen. There'll be some word, some phrase that just kind of jumps out. When that happens, what you do is you just take note of it. Write it down. Don't worry for the moment about why it jumped out at you. Just take note of it. That is the lecture. So after having read through the passage slowly a couple of times, you move on to the second step called the meditatio, which means meditation. And here you begin to re reflect on what you read, ask questions about what you read. This is where you might uh, ask yourself, why did that word or that phrase jump out at me? Is there something going on in my life right now? Something that, that maybe just happened to me, that that word is trying to speak to? Is there a question I have that that word is trying to answer? Why that word? Why did I notice it this way? So you ask questions like that. You, you ask questions about things that may puzzle you in the passage. And in this step, you may even go and look for other resources that you can use to help uh, resolve some of the things that puzzle you in that passage. So a meditatio may lead you in all kinds of directions. But the second step is meditation. The third step, and this is an important step, is oratio. Oratio is Latin for prayer. So here is when you take the results of your meditation and you begin to speak them back to God. You talk to God about these things. You say, God, this is what's going on in my life, and I'm hearing this word in the scripture. What's going on? Is there an answer? Is there a response from you in that? And you simply talk. 
taught these things to the God. So the oratio is kind of like, you know when you're, you have a problem, you've got something going on in your life, and you meet with a really, really good friend. And you sit down and you talk with them, and you just tell them what's going on in your life. And they listen. And maybe your friend doesn't even say very much at all, they just listen. That kind of conversation can really help you work through what's going on in your life. That's the kind of conversation you need to have with God in your oratio. Finally, the fourth step in the life you're giving that is contemplation. contemplation. This is the hardest part for any of us. Because in a contemplative, what you do is you simply sit in silence for a few minutes. That's really hard for us to do. We live in a noisy world, we live in a busy world. It's really hard for us to turn everything on. But what you want to do in a, in a, in a contemplative is sit in silence. So obviously, turn off all that outside noise, which can be hard enough. But also turn off all that inside noise, right? Because we all have that inside noise. We have that tape playing in our head. You know, the things that I gotta get done, the, the problems I'm worried about, all of that stuff that's constantly going on, that needs to be turned off too for a few minutes. Not easy for us to do. That's a skill you have to learn. And there are actually spiritual practices that you can do that can help you to do that, to quiet your mind, turn off all of those thoughts for a few minutes. Uh, we're going to get into those methods in a few weeks. You'll have to be patient for that. But the goal is simply to sit in silence, internal and external, for a few minutes. Why? Because there's a possibility that God is trying to speak to you. God has been trying to say something to you, to comfort you, to bless you, to direct you, whatever it is. And you've been too busy and surrounded by too much noise to hear. For your mind to be open to what God is saying to you. And so, if you quiet yourself, God may speak. I'm not promising you will. I'm not guaranteeing that you will. But it might. Isn't that worth the effort of being silent for a little while? But that's the basic method. Lectio, meditatio, uh, contemplatio, oratio, and contemplatio. But my point here is not to say this is a great method, you should learn all about it, you should understand it intellectually. Because the whole point of this is this is either something that you do or you do not do. This is either something in which you encounter God, or you do not. It's something you try. It's something you experience. So what I want to do now is I want to give you a chance to try at least the first step of that. This is not the perfect situation. This is not the perfect time. This is not the perfect temperature to try something like this. But for a few moments, I would like to give you the opportunity to begin to experience a lecture of the dinner, how you might do it on your own. This is what I'd like you to do. In a few moments, I'm going to read this passage of scripture. We've already read it once. You've already heard it once. But as often happens when we hear these words read, we don't pay full attention. Now, we've got those other things going on in your mind. So what I'd like to do is I'd like you to experience this passage of scripture as a lecture of the demon, as a lecture. So for a few moments now, I will ask you to relax as best you can. Given the temperature, given the situation. Relax. Close your eyes if you are comfortable doing that. But sit in silence for a moment. Take two deep breaths, paying close attention to your breathing. And now 
listening for the word of the Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will go away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. <coughs> but he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they lay. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled to the tomb for terror and amazement. Seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Lord God, I pray that you would take these words. Words from the Gospel of Mark, but words of Scripture, pierce and speak to the lives of Christ and his people. That they read and meditate.
things will come unto you, and they will lead to meditations and contemplations, in which you will find yourself beginning to be able to talk to God about these things. So it's not something you do once and say, oh, that didn't work. Or maybe it worked, and then that had nothing that. Uh, it's, it's something that you can begin to build into your life. I just wanted to give you just a few tools um, that you can use. First of all, I have uh, here in this binder, I have put together a number of, of light tools. So good passages that can be used with just a few instructions on how you can actually do one of these. So there's a great variety. Uh, this binder will be back here in our spiritual center. So you are welcome, maybe on a warm day like this, <laughs> to come in and, and, and use that space and use this. Also, there will uh, later today in my blog and on the web page, links to these things will be there for your use. So you can use that. Also back there at the Spirituality Center, uh, Joni has put together for us some journals. Uh, so as you try this and other spiritual uh, activities uh, and disciplines in the weeks to come, it's good to actually write down. You know, today God seemed to be talking to me about being afraid or a barrier in my life. And, and not everyone works well for this, but a good way for many people is to actually begin to write these things down. So, so there are some journals back there for your use, uh, if you like. Uh, we'll continue to put things back there in weeks to come that you can use, and on the website as well. So. I encourage you to try a few legitimate like I'm not guaranteeing that you will encounter God if you do. I'm saying that you might. And isn't that a possibility? 